Okay, uh, my real name is Albrecht Massotten, blame my parents for that. Uh, nickname known on HWBOT and uh, the overclocking scene, Leeghoofd. So, Dutch pronunciation, uh, maybe I can tell a little bit later on why, where I got it from. Living in Belgium, so same origin as uh, the leader of HWBOT, Massman. And uh, we're still in Matrims, overclocking team. So, uh, Belgium based, PJ in fact introduced me together with uh, Blind. To the team uh, started Allen 2 overclocking, so uh, yeah, still happy to be there. Uh, yeah, I'm an air traffic controller. Usually people start to laugh <laughs> because they know me and, and I'm like I'm a joking guy all the time and stuff like that. But yeah, my normal education, in fact, so just did uh, graduation at high school, straight went to the air traffic controller school, did there like about three years of courses, and doing the job now already like almost 20 years, so pretty happy with that. It's a pretty diverse job, stress, stuff like that, but it was good because I only worked like a few days a week, so I could also focus on the hobby. Now I became an instructor, so there's less time for the hobby, so less overclocking for me as well. But that's the way it is. Good day, good question, because I'm really, I'm really old already, so I have to think. I think it's about 12 years ago. Game-based in the beginning, because it's like most people, I think, start overclocking you're reaching limitations of your system, you're playing games, you want a certain number of frames per second. Yeah? So you start looking, browsing the internet, what's going on, how can I improve, let's say, my performance of my setup without wasting too much cash, so without buying always the high-end products. And that's also why I started looking at overclocking. In those days, we're still talking about a few megahertz difference, single core CPUs, and now, of course, it's totally different. Everything has become a little bit more relaxed to overclock, but yeah, even due to the fact I didn't have like an electronical background, I still managed to overclock my setup and get more performance for the buck. I think with, with especially with matchrooms, it's what when we won the team cup. So we locked out like on HWBOT we have like maybe 70 members, but in fact we only have like three or four real active members. And we managed to get together and do like all the scores and, and, and we grabbed the win, which was like quite impressive, if, especially if you're facing like teams from Greece and, and stuff like that. So real renown overclockers and you could match their scores, even beat them and grab the win. And, and yeah, it was like, uh, I have to lie, two years ago. So quite a good show. Of course, thing was really hectic at that time because we were like benching each night during almost two months. So a uh, lot of issues with the wives, <laughs> but we managed to sort it out. So uh, nah, that was one of our best moments. And also I think the first moment I came to Taipei with uh, when PJ qualified for the Gigabyte GOC, 2009 PJ, I'm still not remembering, something like that. So also my first visit to Taipei and in fact meet the people that you were like chatting with, Skyping with, uh, ICQ even in those days. So it was like real fun and that's also one of the things that keep me motivated, just to be part of the community and come to Taipei and, and hook up with everybody. I think it's become like really more professional. Uh, even uh, just compare it to the guys I was shooting right now, Overclocking TV. If you see the, the equipment that they had like 2009, now all the things they do, the, the camera, the recording, the streaming, so everything has like evolved big time. And I don't know if we're like at the peak at the moment uh, regarding what we can do or what we can't do, but also I think that the companies are like more into the, 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 the scene. Maybe we have reached the peak and might go a little bit up a little bit down, I don't know how it will evolve. But I think together with the, the eSports of the gaming, it's like booming. Especially if you see all the competitions we have at HWBOT now, right now, it's like overwhelming, in fact. I got no, I only hope they were, the only way is up, but that's the question. I think we always need new hardware. That's one of the things, and, and Intel is like really spoiling us, and I think everybody's looking forward to AMD now, what they will, if they are able to fight back because everybody is getting a little bit tired of the current generation CPUs and stuff that we're having right now. So we need a little boost, but where will it end? I got no, I hope we can manage via HWBOT. They can reach like the same level as eSports gaming, maybe a little bit asked too much, but it would be nice if we could evolve into that same direction. So let's keep up the good work and uh, keep on fighting. Don't aim for the top score straight at the beginning. So I also did like radio controlled RC cars. You all see people stepping into the hobby, they're buying always the most expensive gear, all the stuff. Of course, if everything works out, it's motivating, but 
if you break stuff, eh, you can kill motherboards, graphics cards, eh, if you're not into it, maybe bad insulation. So start slow. Also join a team. Eh, at HWL they have the Rookie Cup, stuff like that, where you can get acquainted, get maybe invited by a team, hook up for a team session, and that's when you gain experience. But keep it at a slow or low pace, maybe in the beginning, low end high hardware, and then just build it up. Just build it up, and you always, it's the same with me. I started with air cooling, water cooling, single stage phase, dry ice cooling, and finally we'll reach LM2. So if you want to do extreme stuff, maybe keep it cheap in the beginning and then just build experience. Also, we have seen a lot of members at Matchups that start like ferociously, and then like after six months, they're like, hmm, maybe this is not my thing. But now he has like all the LM2 pods, dewers, stuff like that, which costs like in the beginning a lot of, of cash. And then they get like, what's the revenue? What's the thing for me? And the thing I always don't expect that you will get like free hardware from the start. Everybody thinks I'm an overclocker now. I just need to call somebody and they will send me motherboards, GPUs. You need to evolve in it, do the networking thing. And that's when, when it all starts working in the end. But it usually takes quite some time. It's not like it will be all done in, in, in one year. It takes years to let's say get established in, in the community as well. Besides it's always too hot. <laughs> yeah we're at the mecca of, of, of hardware so what better place to be. Uh, also to meet, uh, it's like I said, all the overclockers, all the contacts with the companies as well. Uh, some are even good looking handling. But it, it, it's like that. It's, it's, it, you need to address, speak to people face to face. That's, that's what I think it's best. So I think yeah, why not? And also, we, we've visited like with Matrim, Seabit before, eh, one of the conventions in, in Hanover, and, and we see that less and less products are introduced there. They're keeping it all for Las Vegas, CES, or Computex Taiwan. So I think it's the best place to be, in fact.